Living and traveling in a truck camper full time can be exhilarating. I love traveling like this. But what happens when the novelty wears off? The road is getting bumpier and bumpier. There are some things about this that really, really suck. And the realities of this nomadic lifestyle start to set in. Loneliness. So be prepared, here it comes the unfiltered truth of life on the road. It's probably the reason why I won't live nomadically full-time forever. Living life on the road in a small truck camper sounds like a dream come true. And there are really amazing things about this lifestyle, but it's not all sunshine and open highways. There are some things about this that really, really suck. And I'm gonna go over them today. Hi, I'm Kim Ann. I've lived in this truck camper for three and a half years with my two dogs, Ron and Lilo. And although I love this lifestyle, there are some challenges. The last one is a big one, and it's probably the reason why I won't live nomadically full-time forever. Number one, constantly packing up and moving can be exhausting. When I'm in the process of doing it, I think to myself, Oh my God, I live like this. What am I crazy? Cause it's hard work loading the camper. If I have my screen tent up, bringing that thing down, packing everything up. It's a lot of work, especially by myself. But once I get it done and I'm on the road, it, it makes everything worth it again. You can't even just get in your vehicle and go. You have to come back into the camper, make sure everything is locked up and everything is stowed properly. It's the part of the lifestyle, but it can be exhausting. And the limited space. I mean, basically you're living in a glorified shoebox. <laughs> <laughs> there's sacrifices to be made. Um, there's a lot of things I can't take with me. A lot of things I had to get rid of. I, I can't have plants. I can't have a lot of kitchen appliances. Um, I have to store my shoes in the truck because I don't have enough room in the truck camper to store all of my things. And you just get used to it, but it, it can be a big negative. <laughs> Finding campsites. Um, I love staying on BLM land, national forest, just in the middle of nowhere and just enjoying nature. But you have to put in some legwork to find those places. It's not difficult. I don't want to dissuade anyone, but you really have to think about it, have to check your apps, have to look at reviews, have to be flexible um, in that if it doesn't work out, you need to go to the next spot. So it's not like you're just coming home, putting the key in your door, and that's where you are. Like, you have to get in your vehicle, you have to drive there, you have to set up, you have to find places. And I don't particularly like campgrounds. They're crowded. I don't like having people right next to me. But they're necessary, so sometimes I find myself in a campground. So you're not always in beautiful places. Sometimes I'm next to a dumpster in a Cracker Barrel parking lot. It's not always sunset vistas and beach scenes and beautiful mountains in the background. Um, when I'm in those places, I really, really appreciate it because they don't come all the time. The bathroom situation could be a big negative. I mean, you're carting around your own waste. Dealing with limited water and having to dump your gray tank and black tank and pooping. Um, I have a standard RV toilet, which I've grown to really like, but I choose not to poop in my toilet. I line the toilet with a bag and I poop in the bag and then I tie the bag up and take it out with the trash immediately. 
um, this is work for me. I just find that it's, it's kind of gross dumping your black tank when there's poo and pee in there. Um, I don't throw toilet paper down my toilet just to keep the tank cleaner, just to keep it running smoother. Um, sometimes when I'm in campgrounds, I see people having to get pumped out because they have poo clogs and I don't want any poo clogs. Um, also, I had a few mishaps with my sewer line while I was dumping and if there was poo in there, it would have been traumatic and so gross. That's just my personal preference. You can poo. I mean, they're designed for poo and pee. Of course, you can poo in your toilet like you do at home. I just choose not to. So then there's the downside of taking your poo out in a bag. Yuck! <laughs> Temperature control is harder. When you're in cold weather, it's okay. I mean, my heat works amazing in here. Um, but when it's hot out, it's unbearable. This past summer, I was in Florida. It's hot. It's humid. We were under an extreme heat warning and a tree fell on my air conditioner. So I went for like a week without an air conditioner. It was unbearable. And during an excessive heat wave, I had no air conditioner. Um, cold, if it's not too, too cold, is doable. Hot, humid, unbearable. <music> Maintenance and repair issues on the road. I've been stuck in the Everglades and my electric didn't work and I had to bail and plug in at a campground. Um, I've been stranded on I-10 in Mississippi and I had to spend nine days in a casino parking lot while my truck got repaired. Those things happen and it's just part of living this lifestyle, but it could be something that really, really sucks. <laughs> Not having a routine while you're traveling can be really hard. When I am stationary for a while, it's a lot easier for me to get up, to do my yoga or my exercise and get into a routine. And if I'm traveling from place to place, it's harder to keep up those routines. It's not impossible and I will conquer it and I will be successful at it at some point in time but it is a difficult thing for me to get used to. Like my diet might slack off, my exercise may slack off. Um, I just, it's just preparing and being able to adapt to those situations. And I believe you could do it. It's just more difficult not having a routine. <music> Managing power and water efficiently. Um, you are living off grid if you're not plugged in all the time and you have limited water. I do have a good deal of water in here. I have 38 gallons of fresh water. So that'll last me a few weeks, even with taking showers. But you just have to be cognizant of how much water you have and where are you going to fill up next. And it's just something when you're in a house, you never have to think of. So it could be an added stress. <music> Adapting to changing weather conditions. This one is dicey and I've been caught in situations where the weather changed, tornado warnings, severe thunderstorms, hail, and you're just out, out and about in the elements with nowhere to go. Um, there's always ways to remedy it. You need to be aware of the weather at all times, which I'm guilty of not checking the weather a lot of times. And that's why I've been caught in these situations. I just realized I didn't check the weather. I always get caught. It's been like three times where there was like major weather, hail, tornadoes, and I just drive right through it because I didn't check the weather and I have a, a weather travel weather app too. Copilot, 
please check the weather for me. Didn't work. But you're a lot more vulnerable out here on the road, so you just have to be aware and have to have a backup plan in case severe weather comes in. I've had challenges with internet. Um, I use my phone as a hotspot and I also have Starlink. I've been on coaching calls when my Starlink wasn't working very well and just having terrible connectivity issues when you're on the road. The connectivity is constantly changing. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Sometimes you have to go to a coffee shop. It really keeps you on your toes, but it's something that could really, really suck. Dealing with unexpected um, emergencies, maybe health emergencies while you're traveling. I had an, um, an incident where I was in National Forest without any cell signal and I had an infected tick bite. So I had to hook up my Starlink, try to find out where in the area I can get some medical attention fairly soon. And it all ended up working out, but it could be bad. You know, I'm alone by myself. Things could happen where it might not turn out as well. Ensuring safety and security while I'm moving around. I'm by myself all the time and I try to do my best, um, but it is an added concern. I have my dogs that I feel are a really good security system. If anyone's around the truck camper, they bark. It's something you really have to think about ahead of time. Decision fatigue. I know people talk about decision fatigue, but it is a real thing. You have to think about what you're going to do and make a lot of decisions throughout the day that you don't have to when you're in a house or in an apartment. You know, where am I going to drive to? How far am I going to drive? Where am I going to stop for the night? What route am I going to take? There's just a lot of things to decide. At the end of the day, especially a travel day, I'm exhausted. Another thing that could be hard is loneliness. Um, I'm an introvert. Um, I don't mind being by myself, but there are times where I'm seeing someplace beautiful and I want to share it with someone. And I have my dogs, but it's not the same. It's nice to be with someone some of the time. But to not be lonely, you need to be looking for it. You need to be social. I go and I visit loved ones, friends around the country, which works for me. Join RV groups or nomad groups, things like that to connect with people because it can be a very lonely lifestyle. You're not in the same place. You're moving from place to place. So the community you build, you have to build yourself. It's not just automatically there. If you're enjoying this content, please like the video, subscribe to my channel. I would appreciate it so, so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Finally, the one that is a biggie for me and it's probably the reason why I will not be totally nomadic for the rest of my life. And that's just the lack of stability. Um, you are like a floating island in a sea of asphalt and you don't have a little space to call your own and just feel safe and relaxed. I'm always on private land or public land, land that does not belong to me. So I can't stay there long term. I have to keep rolling. and. There is a low-grade stress that 
comes with that. And when you do feel at ease, it's only for a temporary period of time. Not the way you do when you own your own property. Now that's the reason why someday I will probably own land or have a small cabin on it. And I'll still travel, but travel part time. And I'll always have a place to come back to, like a respite from the world. And even though this is an amazing lifestyle and I'm really enjoying it, you can get burnt out because of that. I'll be traveling for as long as I can and I try to keep myself as healthy as possible so that I can do that. I don't want to dissuade you from doing this lifestyle because it is an amazing lifestyle full of adventures seeing beautiful places, just traveling and having different experiences every day. But these things are real and it's just a concern. You can get around everything and be prepared for everything, but you really need to be flexible. It's kind of like life, right? We're able to come back to peace and able to adapt and accept and breathe in and reflect, right? You learn a lot traveling like this and the, the lessons you learn, you'll keep with you for the rest of your life and they'll improve.